6.35. And we're going to start off tonight doing um, a moving meeting, and we're going to take a tour of the school. So before we do that, Marty wanted to say a few words, so I will turn the meeting over to her. Sure. Um, so what I gave you is a packet, and they were not stapled exactly in the order that I wanted them to be. But I folded it over, so the paper on top, if you can look at that title, it's 2015 Immediate School uh, Facility Needs. Some of these things, most of these things are going to be pointed out in the tour that Darius is going to lead you on and Bob is going to do color play by play if, if needed. There's two, um, two columns and it says maximum and minimum. And the reason for that, and these are not necessarily hard and fast costs, um, but the minimum, if you look at the elevator, would be for repairs, the 80,000 would be for replacement. Um, same thing as you look down the columns, and some are the, are the same. We will talk about the other funding projects that are listed here. You have asked us to put together things for uh, repairs that need or replacement needing to happen in one year, uh, one to five years and beyond. We'll talk to you about some ideas that we have, um, but I wanted you to be aware specifically of these things on the front. Many of them we've talked about in the past. Many of them you've seen brought forward in the past, particularly the pickup truck, um, and the replacement for the John Deere tractor. That came up when I was still principal here. So these are not new items. Um, some have degraded since we first talked about it and they are becoming more urgent. So without further ado, I'm gonna let Darius lead the troop. All right. Do you have so, anything you'd like to add? So just to start off, I mean, the tours for two reasons. Obviously one is to um, look at some of the needs the building is going to have from re repair and, and, and such. The other is for those of you who haven't been on a more intimate tour of the building, you can see the different programs, what we're offering. So when we're talking about different things and funding of different things, you'll have some mental pictures or you might be able to also come up with questions that you may not have had if you've not seen the spaces when we talk about the different parts of our building. So you'll be able to see programming um, through spaces. and. Uh, so ask questions on that or about facility or if you see something that looks out of place or in place, feel free to ask any questions along the way. As we said, Bob's going to come with us to help me if there's anything I can't answer, um, you know, uh, maintenance wise. Um, but it's pretty much the, the goal of it. And hopefully we can get through in about a half hour and I'm going to take you down, you know, the back way through different areas to see places that aren't always pretty, you know, um, and that kind of thing. So that's really what this is about. Feel free to leave your things here because I'm going to remain. I have some people from the public who are going to be probably showing up at 7 that I need to talk about. Okay. Talk to. All right. Here we go. I've seen the building. Uh, they didn't go out. I was just cautious. It was just very, you know, kind of emphasize the elevator need. One <coughs> more set of stairs. I was going to say, it does emphasize the elevator need. Uh, not knowing exactly what you talked about, I don't know where we're going back into the meeting. Does anyone um, have anything some of the questions share? along the way, we're talking about the funding, and I don't know if you want to talk a little bit about, are we going to go into a full conversation about the long-term funding, what, how to do that, or is that a topic for another meeting? Well, no, I think we could mention, you know, you, when you look through your handout, um, you can see that we do have some items listed for down the road, future needs, and Bob had color-coded you see the lovely, um, that came out to yellow, black, and green. Um, oh, can you even get one? Okay. But in anticipation of maybe some questions, we did, Bob, Darius, Patty, and I have a um, conference call today with Diane Sullivan from MSBA. And, um, and what is MSBA? MSBA is Massachusetts School Building Authority. Okay. And um, it is, I don't know if you want to explain, but basically it would allow us to apply for a grant for funding. And depending upon 
if we were accepted. Uh, they determine a certain percentage for reimbursement. So instead of us having to put out a loan and fund the entire thing, we would have help from the EMSBA. The Do they uh, also consider sustainable options? Yeah. And yeah. So they, they have to, the Massachusetts School Building Authority was uh, established about, I want to say seven to almost maybe 10 years now. Mm -hmm. um, they used to be part of the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education, but the, the, the way we were paying for things and funding things weren't going well, so they moved it back over to the Department of Revenue. One cent of every sales tax goes to the Massachusetts Building Authority, School Building Authority, to build new buildings. They have two basic programs, the Accelerated Repair and the Core Program. Um, we have been looking at all five schools for Accelerated Repair projects, and because you're competing against each other, we've been, submit, we, our plan is to submit one a year uh, as, as far as need. But so when we put this list together for Frontier, um, we started to look, Bob and I and Marty and Darius said, well, do we want to apply for accelerated repair? Well, there's so much that needs to get done. I said, I, I, I really think we should look into the, the core program. So accelerated repair would you cover roof, windows, doors, and HVAC, as long as your building is programmatically okay. Um, the core program covers everything. And when you, when you submit a statement of interest, also known as an SOI, um, you put down all your deficiencies. You list out all your deficiencies. Then if you get invited in, they will come out and look at the building. And they want us to consider everything. They want us to consider maybe it should be an accelerator repair program, maybe it will be a rental addition, and maybe it may be new construction. Um, so we would have to consider all three things. Just to jump in for a second, when we were looking at this over a year ago, the school that had the highest need, immediate need, was Deerfield Elementary. So we did do an SLI for an accelerated repair for that school for a new roof. We just learned that we were accepted for that. So that will begin uh, next summer. Next summer. So that's where we are. So the accelerated repair if you're accepted, the response time is quicker. Mm -hmm. From what we learned today, core projects, the process is, is more years. So right now, the, the next window of opportunity to, uh, to submit an SOI would probably be between January and April of 2016. Uh, but in order to do that, Bob and I would need to start working on the application much sooner than that. Um, we wouldn't know if we're being invited in so about January of 2017, because during the year, the eight to 10 months between when you submit and when you're invited, they're busy, the MSBA is busy doing their due diligence and assessing needs, because these projects are based on urgency and need. Um, so that's what they're doing. So after the um, we be invited in, the initial period would last another eight to nine months to complete what we need to complete. Uh, in order to go to the next phase, which would be like the consult phase where we would get consultants in. That takes six to eight year months. And then the bidding process takes two to three years. So by 2019, we might have a project that has a budget defined and a scope, and then construction would probably take place 2020 to 2021. So the longer we wait to submit our initial SOI, the longer out we are. But the, but the good part of building with MSBA is that you get um, points based on certain factors. The minimum, they will, the minimum they're gonna fund us is 31%. So minimally, we'll, they'll pay for 31% of whatever project we're gonna do. The maximum, which we'll never reach, is 80%. Right now, I think Frontier is probably around the 50% range. But the other thing that complicates this is that they are changing the mechanism for considering how families are classified for low income, which is one of the factors in determining our um, the MSBA. I don't know if the MSBA is going to change or just DESE is going to change. But right now, I think Frontier would probably be at the 50% mark. So looking at that, um, it, it, it would seem 
that maybe we really should think about submitting an SOI and having that initial come up, uh, initial where they would come out and help us come up with a scope, what would be included, what wouldn't be included. And the, the thing that makes us all hesitate is that our regional agreement does not address capital. So we, the other part of the funding mechanism, our side of it, is undefined. So we would have to figure out how we would do that at our end before we, we could move forward. And uh, they talked about putting together a master plan, which sounded really like something we should have been working on already. Um, and in that, we would have like make uh, decision-making matrices and things like that. We would get points for having this master plan. So there, there were some good points for us to really consider doing this and moving forward with it, and a lot of homework on our end to get our to be able to get our funding in place. So one of the big considerations is what do we do in the meantime? Mm -hmm. Because if construction were not to start until 2020 or 2022, the things that are becoming priorities may develop into to urgency, and um, so that's why you have this document. And um, we want you to spend some time taking a look at it. But I do think, you know, that we probably should start to pursue a statement of interest. Even though it's 2015, you know, it's going to be a six, five, six year process. And once you do that initial SOI, if we don't get invited that first year, the bulk of the work is done. And then the next period that we can submit an application, you're just refreshing your application. So it's not like we have to start mm -hmm. from bare bones again. Um, and the reason that it takes so long is there's approximately 1,700 school buildings in the mm -hmm. Commonwealth, and the funding that they do, they do accept 16 to 19 projects a year in this in the core program. Uh, so that's why it can take many attempts based on urgency and need, and they and they just kept hammering that point: urgency and need. Well, sooner or later, we're going to become urgent and we're going to become the media. So it's just depending on, let's, do we just stick our toe in now and see where we are as far as how urgent and needy we are, or do we continue to wait? You Thank can you. go on their site and you can look up mm -hmm. all those people who have posted. Because just, they put they post them, but they don't necessarily are going to get it. If we pick out one of these, one or two of these things that are listed here now, before, are they going to read versus for those ones that we No. Know? And I asked also is if we do have a subset that could be considered under the accelerated repair, could we put something into the accelerated repair while we wait for the core? And they said, not really. You know, they don't want to spend money on anything that, that the core program might say, well, now you've got to respend that money. But so, also, also, I thought they, they said during the phone call that our planning and our maintenance heavily toward the mm -hmm. application right so if the we points. do a good job now that's in right. our favor so that would count to how many points from the 31 to 80 we could get there could be one to two points added for having a good maintenance plan we get points. yes right. well it's your percentage of reimbursement that we don't have to put out yeah are any of these things so crucial that maybe we should be on some on our warrants next year for the towns well, so that's why Bob gave you the immediate facility needs that we really need to address now. So we, are we going to go after funding through a warrant through the town meetings next year? For that didn't month? work successfully for us the last time we did that because there is no mechanism in the regional agreement. So we went forward to, uh, to four town warrants and they all didn't agree and we got nothing approved. Right. And these were safety issues and not to be one, but it was right after Sandy Hook, and we did not get approval. We just have to put it in the maintenance budget, increase the maintenance budget to cover the true cost of maintaining the building and, and taking care of this stuff. And that's what I said we're going to do for next year because yeah. we weren't going to come in at zero percent again. Yeah, well, um, you know, we're, we're already so far over in our maintenance count this year, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, we're going to see a hefty increase. Mm -hmm. You're probably going to see a hundred thousand dollar increase in the mm -hmm. 
um, Mr. Lesko and I are going to spend FY16 really pulling apart our maintenance budget so that when we do an FY17, when we go to do the FY17, we're going to have like almost everything to the penny of what we need and why we need it. And so, and we're going to document it because we're going to take a look back five years of history and say, and look at how our costs have increased in each of the different areas that we are maintaining in the building. So as we go through the agenda tonight, there will be different points that we are going to address how we feel that we can finance some of these immediate projects. Okay. Can I just ask a real simple spreadsheet question? Sure. There's gotta be a logic to how these are broken up, these categories. Are there headers or columns? Are there like titles that go with each one of them? They're separated by two line lines. Are you trying to like define them in like an area of the building or a particular function? No, actually, I, I can talk about, you know, the, there's there's three different lists here. Oh, I'm talking about this one. Yep. Oh, the, yeah. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the way it. those projects are broken up by similar. Uh, Patty and I at, at times have talked, and 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 Patty likes, and I think it's a good idea for similar types of projects to be in the in an area. So you know that the the, the first. The first bunch is, is doors and hardware. The second bunch is roofing and exterior. The third bunch that I'm looking at, I'm on the second page, I'm sorry, I started it, um, is, is you know building kind of treatments. If you go back to the first page, the first bunch is, is boilers and HVAC stuff. The second bunch is equipment that we use around the school. The third bunch is things related to athletics. Um, it was just a way of lumping similar projects um, together. So I, and I've just left the space as a way to, to break them up. But there, there's really no. Could you set that out with the categorization for sure. each section? Absolutely. Place, spread, sort, categorize. You want just title or yeah. um, just titles as well? Okay. And if you could also put the dollars in. With the colors, so you can have a total of the one year, the three year, the one year, the one to five, five plus. Well, we, we didn't, yeah, we, we, we didn't, didn't want to put that dollars. That was purposeful. We didn't put the dollars because we don't <coughs> want people focused on the dollars. We want people focused on the urgency of, of the need. And I understand that the dollars need to be put in there, but right now, if we went out and priced all these things, Bob, they may not be accurate. But we don't, you and people don't respond to us if we say, well, we're thinking of doing a project in five years. What we could you give us a price on it? I mean, so we could do some very rough estimates, but at this point, we're not so much looking at dollars. We're looking at time plots. What did you? You came up with a general total. Yeah, I actually, at, after our meeting today, Marty asked me to go through the exercise because he, he said somebody's going to ask how much all of these. <laughs> Total project total, was and I did. I, I took no, some I really, I took some really crazy guesses, and I filled in all the blanks, and I ran the spreadsheet, and I came out at a little over five million dollars. And and these are just, you know, th these aren't. Uh, another thing that's important to mention here is, I'm looking in all of these sheets of purely maintenance stuff. There are programmatic needs in the building that, if you were going to do a renovation, you want to kind of do the two together. So that would add some things. But what I'm trying to create is a planning document for maintenance. And so, you know, actually we talked back and forth a lot about whether we were even gonna include the sheet with the numbers on it because they change so much and you can get really hung up on the amounts. Um, what I tried to show with the colored thing is, you know, that first block of less than one year projects are the same thing that's on the first sheet that are really important. We need, we need to deal with that. And then I've got a block of things that I think would probably, you know, we've got one to five years with them. And then some other things that are five plus years. And then that last green block is kind of a guess, and there's a lot of overlap, that if we waited and did things in a renovation, which kind of things would fall in the renovation? So, you know, it, it's just a planning document. Including in the planning document, one of the other things, we have some efficiencies like with the unit heaters. What, what we think we could save fuel-wise mm -hmm. by doing that so that we're not just, you know, we can show that we did our due diligence to try to figure out what's the cost-benefit that we, you know. Okay, yeah, absolutely. We so can. that we can, when, when the Finance Committee looks at it or the Selectman looks at it, they can see that, you know, we just did 
we didn't let you slide. We, we gave you the real grill. And make sure that we're going to be cost effective and we're not going to be wasting any of our money. And, and something something we can point, we've, we've been very well funded by Wamico doing energy projects. We did a lot of lighting. Um, we've done the pumps and a bunch of other stuff. And it really reflects in our electrical bills. Um, we've shown on a kilowatt hour consumption a big reduction. The price of electricity keeps going up so that on a dollar level it doesn't always look that good. But uh, we have really cut a lot. Anyone else? Chairman, please put this thing on the agenda for the first meeting in, the, in September. I said the first meeting <coughs> in September because we have had more than one. What exactly would you like on the meeting board? Well, I'd like to, you know, touch base again. Yeah, touch base. Mm -hmm. And we're going to we're going to get a we'll be getting a report as to what they did during the summer mm -hmm. on whatever money they had available. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Can you put that on the agenda? Yeah. Because this year we doubled up what the maintenance fee was. You know, we're up eighty four percent. On you know we went from fifty thousand to. Eighty-four thousand. Yeah, that's 80, what we. Well, we're overdrawn. That that well, difference. And next year's budget, we only have the same original fifty, fifty or fifty-two thousand dollars. So, whatever is going to get done this summer is going to get done, and whatever is left over in this is going to have to get encumbered to do it. Right. Plus, we voted out of the E and D, which I don't really like to do. Anyone else? How much money do we have saved in various special funds for this? Uh, immediate facility need repair. The balance in the stabilization fund is eleven thousand five hundred and eighty three dollars. But you got four hundred thousand in the E and D account. But you really should just you should budget it. You know, or we got money left over okay, in the so current year. We why don't we it. put it on in September and pick up that conversation then when they have something else yep. to tell us. Really? Okay? But meanwhile Marty's gonna to wanna to anyone else use some Anything of the surplus to say? To Something. Well, we'll talk about that as we go through the agenda. Okay. Just yeah. Hearing nothing, let's move along. Another question. So what, what do you need to... Uh, let's try. We <laughs> <laughs> um, talked about the application time is next winter. Mm -hmm. It's need January. From us to proceed with that, or we're just going to... We would need a vote to actually yeah. do the submission <coughs> uh, from the school committee to submit the SOI. But I, I, I think that... Um, Marty and Darius and Bob and I, we, we haven't sat down and said, yeah, we're going to go ahead with the master plan. But I think over the summer, we're going to spend some planning time to create the master plan and start putting some data that we know we're going to need together and look at an application so Bob and I can start getting all the information together. We would start this process whether or not we would, we're going to submit an SOI in the winter. So I think that's going to be on our agendas for things to do. Uh, this summer in fall. So we don't need anything now. We can do something in September I mean, later on. I mean, you can ask for a uh, vote of confidence to do the vote of confidence to do that so that we don't do all that. It's not the wishes of this. I mean, is that direction? It's, it's, it's pretty obviously that's the direction, but you know, just to say they want us to investigate. If further. I framed it, does anyone not want to save money? I can't imagine. <laughs> yeah. Good enough. <laughs> I think that's the thing that we have to focus on is yeah. getting our regional agreement corrected for capital. Um, I think that would be our focus is um, trying to put together a, a, a committee to amend the regional agreement to allow us to, to, buy, to you know to, to do capital projects. I think that's a non-starter. Yeah, that is a non-starter. That's just not going to happen. See what happens with the tech school vote next week. Next week, isn't it? How did we that? How did we vote the ninety eight? So that I was gonna say is that is that different than just incurring the fund? The debt for construction is different than yeah, I don't know what you did. How did they do the 98, the, one that, just, the project that finished in 98, so... It was just a bond issue. Well, how did they, they, they go through all four towns? So they had to vote all four towns. What's that? They did. The school committee votes to incur debt, and then the towns have a certain amount of time to hold their town meetings and agree or disagree. And the towns, all four towns voted. And in this case, when we did for the capital projects two years ago, all four towns did not agree. 
we didn't vote to incur the debt. We didn't vote to incur the debt. They got a they got a menu correct that they right. could choose. Yeah. And correct. They so did. Right. Yeah. But the, uh, the idea that we didn't get our way in a democratic situation, so therefore we give up on democracy. And I think the way to go is to put it on warrants. That's the way it should be. It's up to us to try to talk to townspeople saying, hey, thank you. We yes. walked through it. We know the situation. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's it. You know, Maybe try it once, time. try it, try it again. Yeah. I, mean, I would. Like Especially if it's something, you know, as simple as keeping the doors locked. But I think the other thing, Mr. Hala, is that we heard from the towns that that's not the way they want us to do it. Not only didn't they approve it, but I think we heard from the select boards that that wasn't the way they wanted us to do it. Well, if they don't want to give us more money in the maintenance fund, then there's, there's only other, one other way to go after the money, it's through warrants. And it's not the selectmen's job to say right. how they want it. It's town meeting that makes those decisions. And to get pushed around by one finance going on. Not what? So we so we already did put together a uh, committee mm -hmm. and that some of us served on, um, and I think that's the other thing we need to shake that off because we never got a final. We had made some recommendations. I know Mr. Becker was on that committee with me, and I don't remember if anyone else was. Nat came to some meetings, yeah. and we we came up with some suggestions, and then they got lost on someone's computer, and no one seems to have any documentation of the work we did. So I think we may need to shake that committee up and. And, and, and meet and try to. Someone was sort of spearheading. I, I remember. Right? He, he, he does not have it. I have approached every committee member, so I have to reconvene the committee. Great. Right, so we're going to put this on agenda for September and pick it up then. Everybody, bring your thoughts in September. But you want to do it. So now moving oh, along. Wow, I didn't even hear that. <laughs> not even going to go there. Um, review and approve the minutes of May 12th, 2015. You got some corrections. Yes, we do. Um, Mr. Decker has already pointed out that uh, it says in the second line, Tuesday, March 10th, and that should be Tuesday, May 12th. Um, if you go further down, um, one, two, three, four lines up. There was no gave in the SAC report. Oh, okay. I don't even know what that should be, or there was no SAC There was report. no student activity report. Okay. Okay. Um, on the second page, William Smith moved to approve. It was seconded, but we have no name. I'm sure he has that and just hadn't inserted it there. And same Say thing. that again, I'm sorry. Where it says William Smith moved to approve the addition of GB1, yeah. and then it was seconded, but we have no name on the second. I'm sure it's in his notes. We just have to remind okay. him. Same thing on the next thing. Judy Pierce moved, seconded in the past, but no name. And then the last one, William Smith moved to adjourn and seconded, which he probably did. <laughs> yeah, I think he probably did. I'm sure Is someone he trying else to get out of your so. fast that night? I know, huh? It comes so rare. So I'm, sh I'm sure he has that. He just didn't insert it, so we just have to remind him about it. Anybody else have anything else? Okay. Hearing nothing, moving along. Um, financial statements? Well, I didn't have a, a motion. Oh, okay. Sorry, to I approve. apologize. Can I have a motion to approve the minutes? Subject to revision. Subject to revision. Or with the corrections. We can, we'd have to wait till September. Well, we, we can move them subject to, you know. Does any, but no one else has any other revision, so we can do well, that. Well, Billy's going to have to tell us who made the motion. Okay. We'll put your name down. It doesn't matter. Can we just put motion sure by so. the body? Uh, I made the motion. I'm sure of it. Seconded. <laughs> with correction. Yeah, with correction. Hey, actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. actually, I want to tell you a little secret. No, <laughs> no secrets. Moving along, I gotta get out of here hey, tonight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pictures, <laughs> okay. He can go back through so, and look it up and tell you who made the motion. Well, yeah. it must have been me. We're fine. I usually fine. make motions. We can do that. Okay, so right. we will. Somebody has just made a motion to review that we approve the minutes of May 12th with revisions. Do I have a second? You have a second. Yeah. A second. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Opposed? Who cannot vote? Everybody Bob. can vote. Bob can't vote. Okay. So how many? I'm sorry, I didn't count fast enough. So it's um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then one. Okay. Okay. Now financial statements. All right. 
Okay, so um, you have the report for May in front of you, and if you go to page six, you can see with one month to go, we have $937,905.28 left in our budget. Um, tonight, I'm gonna get back to that, but tonight you have 19 warrants and an activity warrant for a total of 20 warrants uh, in the amount of $1,413,939.48. Uh, those were, those uh, warrants were emailed to you for your review. Um, the second thing I want to talk about tonight is our electricity and gas bids. Um, we did lock in our, our electricity uh, with Constellation. We did a two-year contract for 0 0.909 cents which is almost a two cent increase from our current kilowatt hour of 0 0.71 cents. Um, we did a two year because the retail electrical, electricity environment has a lot changing in the next couple of years and we could see some savings in year three, so we didn't want to lock into a third, third year. Um, other bidders uh, included Next Era, who came in at 0 0.951 cents, Con Ed at 0 0.958 cents, Champion at 0.959 cents, and our current provider, Direct Energy, came in at 0.992 cents. So we're all set there uh, with our electricity. Can we step back one step first? Mm -hmm. you, you mentioned the fact that the warrants that you emailed us total how much? 1,413,939.48. Now, and of that, are those reflected? as having already been paid on this? Uh, yes. Yes? Yes. So, knowing all the bills that we have outstanding, right, mm -hmm. we currently have $937, $1,000, that we have not encumbered and are not obligated to pay anybody at that's this point. That's natural. That's what I'm trying to fish for. Well, th that's why I said I'm gonna get back to that. All right, all right. Okay. Um, our gas bid. Currently, we go out to bid through the Lower Pioneer Valley Educational Collaborative. From now on, I'm going to say LP Beck. Uh, with about 50 to 75 other communities for uh, gas. And Springfield is the largest community that bids with us. This year, there are two types of gas users, assigned and unassigned. And the assigned are considered grandfather accounts, and the unassigned are considered non-grandfather accounts. And depending on your each count and community's makeup of assigned and unassigned counts uh, is going to be what really affects our gas bid this time. We're two and one. Waitley and Deerfield are assigned, and Frontier is unassigned. And I this isn't I'm trying to make this as clear as mud. In the past, the unassigned were getting better rates than the assigned. So the unassigned were sort of carrying the assigns. This time, it's going to flip. For whatever's going on in the gas retail market, the assigns are going to be taking care of the unassigned. So this was a big decision for Springfield to look at what they were going to do. And however Springfield went, we were all going to go. Springfield opted out. They're not going to bid with us. So now we're all sort of on our own to get our own bids. Through, still through LP back, but we can't go out as one large consumer user. So we were talking about this this past Friday. We've had two meetings so far. And um, I did ask Mr. Schrader at LP Beck. Um, there was a couple other communities there from Franklin County. I asked him to try and price us for all Berkshire gas people together to see if us to get if we all bonded together Franklin County through Berkshire Gas if we could get a better price so he is going to look at that individually and as a small sort of um, conglomerate within that big one so we're still out on that but at this point we're being advised again to do a two-year bid because by the third year the of uh, the agon thing I can't say this word expansion project will be done online which gives us more capacity which should lower the price because there'll be more capacity to get the gas up here so we're going to be looking to sign in for a two-year bid but we're not uh, 
we're not locked into anything right now. I'm still waiting for Mr. Schroeder to or Schrader to give me some pricing. So that's where we are with the gas bid. But that'll probably happen over the summer sooner than later. But that's the big problem the gas companies are getting all upset about not being get, getting any pipeline. Is that gonna cause us some problem? The, that's what we're going to do it too. The Algonquin is all is going to be completed by our third year. So that's why we don't want to lock in a price. And then there's other projects that Kinder Morgan has going on that aren't approved yet. That, but that's not going to that's not going to affect this bid cycle. That would be two bid cycles out, depending on what happens with Kinder Morgan. But we'll still be able to buy gas. Just yeah. What we're going to pay. yeah. Right. Well, because they're not taking any new gas customers. Bob, people in Waitley will be able to get gas. They didn't vote to fight it, huh? That's right. So we'll have gas. We'll but share it with you guys. You probably will. Uh, we have the uh, ability to spoil this for oil also. Oil's still too, it, it's still priced out. It, it would cost us three times as much. Anyone else? Okay, so the, can I go back to the uh, yep. conversation? Okay, so um, as I said, it looks like we have 935000 one of my biggest challenges having been here is that we don't use our financial system to encumber money. So there's POs out there that I have no idea about until they pay them. So it makes answering Mr. Decker's question like, oh, we have $900,000 unencumbered. No, that's not true. So I go through and I manually try to calculate what I know is going to be. So I know for a fact that we have at least another $230,000 in uh, the district payments to be made. I know we have another $103,000 on our debt payment to be made. The principal payments yet to be made will be made this month. Um, I know we've got probably two more payments on transportation. So th those are the types of things that I have to go through and manually compute. So right now, our big overages our, our SPED tuitions and our SPED transportation. Uh, we've had a lot of movement with our students this year, which has caused us to add on bus routes. Uh, unfortunately, we have a lot of kids in foster homes and they are being moved from Franklin to Hampshire to Hamden County and we have to go and get those kids. We have to bring them back to school. That's their, that's their right. We also have three new placements in out of district uh, schools which we didn't anticipate, and these are mostly uh, students who have emotional and social behavior <coughs> issues that we could not maintain in our building. So right now, spent tuition and transportation is over budget, about 100,000. We've talked endlessly about building maintenance being over $44,000. So we have some year-end technology purchases we still would like to make, um, and I, I know Mr. Modesto and uh, Mr. Paul are working on that to get me those purchase orders so that we can get that encumbered. On the good side, we have some savings. Um, our health insurance, our electricity and heating, and our contract adjustments all have some significant savings, which will help us cover the overages in SPED and the building maintenance. So right now, uh, my manual projection, <laughs> um, I, I'm thinking that we have enough money to go ahead and fund the $115,000 in the short-term projects that Mr. Lesko would like to get done this summer. Uh, and I think we would still be okay in, our, in this year's budget. And as Mr. Decker also had said, there is money in our E&D in the amount of $419,263. But I'd really like to keep that conversation aside for our um, our OPEP conversation, which is going to be coming up shortly on the agenda. So, do you think that we're going to have $115,000 available to take care of these short-term problems? Well, if we can solve it for that, I think we ought to. I just don't know. But that's not solving it. Solving it is $228,000. That's just getting you to the next year. Then we can budget next year for that. So the point that I'm trying to make is I want to live. I want to take the money out of the current year's budget because it is current year maintenance and, and get it where it belongs. And I'd like to make sure we budget 
our maintenance properly so when we go to town meeting we can ask them and if we take the money from the E and D to offset the budget, that's fine. I don't want to take money directly from E and D to fund these other projects. Uh, and actually, because we lose track. If we if we fund it minimally, we take care of four of them totally, <coughs> um, and then we have the other four. I'm a little wiggy about the elevator situation being a minimum fix and not a maximum fix, but yeah. that's just me. Um, but at least it's a start. And it gets the elevator moving but again. It sounds like there might be quite a bit more money than the 115, but we're just not sure. Sure. And that, so I would just like to address that point, that the, the point of not being sure. So well, because this has been, I don't know how many years you've been doing this, but this is just the same conversation over and over again. That, we're just not sure. We don't have it set up so that we can tell what our purchase orders are. The, the, that's the system that, I, that, that was here when I got here. It's a manual system, and it happens in all five schools. So um, what, is it, what will it take to get it so that we have certainty and so that this is like a... Well, nothing's ever certain except death and taxes. You know um, what I mean, though. But we can get closer. And part of it was when we were waiting for the... Uh, infrastructure in our computer systems because before only people in central office could get to the infinite vision software and now that's changed so I'm going to try and be bringing on a school a year maybe two years if it goes successfully I mean two schools a year if the first goes successfully and we were we will be piloting a program for a few users in FY16 specifically Mr. Lesko he doesn't know that yet but. One of the things, too, Phil, that we've done with the other school committees, um, as we've said, if there were additional funds available, what would be the priority for a school committee? Because we don't meet in the summer. So what I'm hearing is if, if there were additional funds, it, um, substantial additional funds, you would recommend um, replacing the elevator, not just repairing it. Mm -hmm. Um, I hear Cindy saying that, and um, replacing the doors, not just buying parts for the doors. Is that what I'm hearing you? Well, I like what well, you showed us, what he showed us with the lock. That seems yeah. to be sufficient. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I don't have a problem with that. But the thing is, you, if you spend the money or you vote it after July 1, you can't use the encumbered funds. You know, you'd have to vote it out of E&D. If we met again before the end of the month, when you had a better idea of what bills we're not going to know by then, by the end of the month. Well, bills roll in and through July. That's the problem. See, and, and the other thing that the other part of this system that I've inherited is that um, the four. I have deadlines with the four elementary schools. I have to have everything encumbered by like July 9th to July 15th. We don't have that same deadline at Frontier because we're running the books. So Frontier could stay open till August, technically. We should. We should. We should, but no. we can't. We I don't have to close it. No, but we shouldn't be covering funds after the 1st of July, that, or, or signing purchase orders after the 1st of July to use encumbered funds because we should have been covered it and issued the purchase order right. before the 1st of July. But there's no way these purchase orders would get issued because not there's not one thing on here. Well, I'm going to take that back. The the brick wall and the um, John Deere tractor are the only two things that don't need to be bid. So we're going to have to put in a purchase order for a bid with these amounts and then replace that purchase order with a vendor when we award the bid. Because there's no way uh, Bob's going to get all these projects bid before June 30th. Because we've also got, I, I, bet, I know it won't happen because I also have to get the spent transportation for the summer out too. One thing you have to do going forward is when a purchase order gets issued, you need to know about it in a ledger so you can keep track of what's outside. That's all I'd be doing all day, Bob, and I'd be able to do nothing else. No, they can do a spreadsheet. You just Who? Who's they? Whoever issued it. All we would do is that's all one person would yeah, do like, all day long. I'd need a person just for that. We're spending $10 million. Oh, I know. 
So if we can spin the minimum, if we have that, and we can do that which is also the maximum, then could we not wait and see if there's any more monies coming in to do the other things more efficiently well, I than to know, just spend the minimum on them? From, from my perspective, it's something I've always kind of said that I'd love to have is some amount of money that it's, you know, we can report back how we spent it, but if, if, if someone was to say we'll spend somewhere between the 150 and the 228, I could start on some of the projects mm -hmm. right away Correct. and and not do the ones where there was a decision and then as we found out if we had more money or not then right. we could so yeah we could manage that very easily. Does everybody get that? Yeah, the only problem sense. is we got to stay within the 228 or we're going to have to fund it on B and D. Right, but do you, do you understand what he's saying? Give me something and I can start some things? How do we make you know, that? You start yeah. something is uh, something that doesn't have to go out to bid. Right. Which is two items. No, we can start other. We can, like I said, if we, if you guys, whatever you approve, let's say you approve, um, what, I'm just going to pick the, the GM pickup truck. I can put a PO in the system for pickup truck bid, $40,000. Then, so that encumbers the funds in this year. Then Bob and I put a bid spec together. We go out to bid, and let's just say that Decker Ford gets the award, then I just change that bid PO to say Decker Ford, mm -hmm. then with the actual amount. Keith? Uh, well, I heard you Keith, say that. Keith has a floor. I, I heard you say that the, the John Deere and GMC, you've been, it's been asking for since you were principal, so have we been operating without those? Mm -hmm. no. no, we've pieced them together. I mean, you know, I don't know how many hundred thousand miles are on the truck and it's welded and it, we and, get it to pass inspection, but you know, on towing equipment and stuff. It's really important to bring up that all we're looking for at this point, the, the, the short term emergency thing for that tractor is just the bag in the unit, it's not the tractor. Right. Um, but, you know, the, the, these are all things that are just kind of broken. They're, you know, they're, the, the truck keeps going, but from my perspective, it's a big safety issue. You know, we're, we're, we're using that truck tow a trailer with a heavy lawnmower on it to you know to the fields that we maintain in Whateley several times a week and we've had issues with brakes and a whole bunch of other things with that truck um, it's an old truck it's in desperate need of maintenance it's time to replace it how many miles on it it's got over 100,000 miles on it but and more is the you know more more than the miles is, is the condition of it I mean, it's 15 years old the, you know, we've replaced a third of the brake lines on it because they're rusted out. Um, the door hardware is all broken off it. You have to open the door on the outside. That's good. Roll down the window. Open it. Yeah. So, are you looking for a vote from us to approve these monies to be spent? Because we were just talking about holding off until September. I'm not looking for a vote. I'm looking for, um, I guess, guidance. Guidance. Yes. We did the same thing we yeah and we've done that in the other school committees that if there was additional I'm sorry if there are extra funds at the end of the year the priority would be in consultation with Bob Lesko the building principal and the business manager that um, priority attention would be to the maintenance items listed it doesn't have to be a in September how you spent the money right Keith. my feeling is that the the doors and the control upgrades are large multi part processes that can go on from year to year it looks like you can do 15 this year 15 next year etc and I would personally say if you're going to go and spend extra which Patty says we may have is to repair the elevator not just in totality in yes. totality and the, the, the the tour was very useful and some of the mm -hmm. information that Bob was able to share with us about that that there are I don't know if everybody heard that that there are financial penalties that if you don't right. fix part right. of it I said then it da 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 and if you don't fix another big part of it then another big pen so it's like it's not just a number right there that stays static it's a number that goes in the wrong direction if we don't take care of it. So okay. you'd be 120,000 if you just did the elevator and the truck. Well and that's your choice as long as you're just looking for guidance. Now are you going to buy a four-wheel drive with a plow? No I'm not really not efficient for us to, to try to we've been using contractors to plow
for us to buy the kind of equipment that it would really take to plow all of these lots, it's crazy. If anything, Kill if it turns years. out the bid comes in low, one of the things that I might look at doing is putting an aftermarket dump body on the truck because we're always looking to move around wood chips and dirt and that sort of stuff. But you know, you could also buy a utility trailer. Pardon me. You could buy a utility dump okay, trailer. You know, we've got a pretty good trailer now that we use. Um, we replaced the trailer that we had. And you know that we use for but there's a state there's a state bid for those pickup trucks that you should be able to go right to it. I, at one time Sarah was on it. And, the, uh, the, bid, the bids don't favor Western Mass. The bids favor Eastern Mass. We always find even with our multi-school activity bus, we did a better job putting uh, uh, putting it out to bid. The state contract for things like this do not help us out here in Western Mass. Judy, so my question is. As a school committee, are we really? I understand that the truck is on the priority list, but are we really recommending buying a truck before fixing the infrastructure of the building, the heating and cooling systems, the valves that actually control the condition and the building? That well, 600 kids come into a day plus faculty and staff. And that's hard. That would be hard. I understand that you. I understand. It feels like the sentiment is agree to say extra money goes to these priorities. The trouble I have is how the priorities get decided, and I personally, as a school committee member, would have a hard time justifying forty thousand dollars for a truck, understanding how the truck gets used, and all those other things over fixing the, the valve or over fixing, you know, like any of those other items that are on there that actually are critical to the function and the expense that we use. For the Jeannie, I totally appreciate what you're saying. I I, I get that. But that's what happens with this truck. It keeps getting pushed to the bottom mm -hmm. year after year after yeah. year, and it never rises to the top until when? Until we absolutely have to take it off the road, and then we're out of business and we're renting a truck in the interim? Okay, but maybe it's, so if there's 10 things on the list, then it's the 10th thing that gets done. But Is I do worry about the health and welfare of our custodians and maintenance people who are driving it back and forth two and three and four times a day. Um, do we necessarily need to buy a four-wheel drive? Could we just get a plane? We went through this three years ago, yeah. and that's why we still have the same truck. Yeah. Oh. No, no, well, can we just buy a plane Chevy work truck or a plane GMC work truck? We probably could, um, but it's, it's not going to be the real piece of equipment that we need. Um, and, and the savings, I don't think, are going to be that great by the time you end up bidding on it. Um, we need a good heavy-duty <clears> truck. The real issue here is we're going to come to a point with this truck where we can't drive it anymore, which means we're not going to be able to maintain the athletic fields at Hurley. And if we can't maintain the athletic fields at Hurley, that's going to shut down a substantial portion of the athletics. Go. Keith actually had his. Oh, sorry, Keith. Thank um, you. Patty said you felt confident that we would have $115,000 for that. So if we took the elevator at $80,000 and then everything else in the right-hand column, that comes out to about $185,000. You said we may have more. Is that within our ballpark? The elevator? Oh, no. That's the, the elevator is full. This way. And then everything else in the right-hand column. That would be 182800 $800. It's going to be, it, 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 it. <laughs> it's touch and go. Um, I, I'm going to have to rein in um, the, the year end computer purchases to do it. <coughs> <laughs> Should have bought them earlier. I, well, <laughs> no, those are those are a big deal. The year-end computer purchases are a big deal. Well, well, yeah, yeah, budget, I spot. Yeah, you got book money too. Um, That's what I was thinking. Uh, what was he going to say? Okay, Alan. I was just going to say you are saying you were looking for guidance. That sounds like a guide. If we could agree on that, it doesn't mean that one hundred eighty thousand will be funded. But let's work on that as as a working model and see how far the cash goes. Okay. All right. Um, with the caveat that it will be under the purview of Bob Lesko, building principal, and the business manager as far as setting priorities. 
That's okay. 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 No one else has anything else we need to do. Let's, let's go back through so we all understand what, what you're talking about. What I'm saying is if there are end of the year funds, yeah. that the priority would go towards the immediate facilities needs as listed here, with top priority being given to the replacement of the elevator. That's what I heard people say. Correct. Right. And, right. the, and, the, and then the minimum <coughs> repair cost on the right hand column for the rest of the For the project. rest. Mm -hmm. Okay. Which you're still going to buy the pickup. Probably. And are we going to apply the stabilizer 11000 to this? I don't. We hadn't talked oh, about that. We hadn't that. talked about that. I think we leave it if I have. If, if we need it, we can come back and, and get it, you know. And then if, if you put the, if you go out the bid on the truck, can we do a dual bid again where you do a used and a new bid just to see if you get any takers? With a heavy duty truck, Phil, we don't want a used vehicle. We don't want someone else that's already beat it to death and now we, and has low mileage, but the wear and tear is huge, and then we inherit a headache. So we bought a new truck, and our repairs and maintenance hasn't gone down. Can you ask about a five-year lease? A truck coming off of a lease with like 10,000 miles on it is half the price. They use the plow. Yeah, if they use the plow, you don't know they can take that plow rig right off that frame. All right, sounds like we've come to some sort of agreement here for our guidance. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on. Um, we don't have to vote on that. I just took it as the committee support is what I wrote. Right. Patty, do you have anything else? No, that uh, wraps it up for me. Public comment. We have someone in the public that would like to speak. Come on up. Come on up. Come on up. I just want to read something. Actually. There's a speaker right over here. You can sit. Really? Do I have to sit there? You guys aren't. All you have to do is speak up so we can hear you. You guys aren't 10 and 11 years old, though, so I have a hard time. All right. So, my name is Jill Barnes, and I, I emailed um, some of you about the block scheduling. I'm going to get really nervous. Sorry. Like I said, you're not you're not nine to ten years old. Pretend we are. Oh, okay. yeah, so yeah, I take it sometimes. <laughs> so um, I'm I'm here as a concerned parent for um, the block scheduling. That's that happens, and I have a freshman and a junior. Um, and as my freshman is preparing for for sophomore year, he was um, faced with a choice that I, as a parent, wish he had to make. I know Judy had also expressed the same concern with her daughter. And I just, I, I feel like my last paragraph that I kind of wrote is kind of says it all. Um, the block schedule has, has made participating in both band and having a pre-honors or an honors pre-calc course has made it impossible to do both for camping. And I feel like <clears throat> the block scheduling is so rigid for some of these kids who want to do, and I'm not saying that Camden wants to do band and violin and chorus, and he doesn't want to do that. He, he wants to just play in band, <laughs> and he wants to take an honors course. So I feel like all he wants to do is do what any well-rounded student should be able to do. So I feel like the block scheduling maybe needs to be looked at again, and that was all I was really asking, to just look at. And I don't know if the size of the school, I know if you had more than one block and more than one place to put pre-honors, or honors pre-help, then that would work. But I don't know, we're not big enough for that. You're not big enough for to provide more than one block of honors pre-help. And I, I understand that, but my concern is for camp. My concern is for my kids and the two more that are coming up. So. I'm not a parent that, you know, is just going to say, okay, my kids are out of here in four years. I have two more that are going to be in the middle school next year. So I'd like to see, you know, some of this just get looked at again so that these kids don't have to choose between being a musician and an artist and a high achieving student. And, you know, let's let them have all of it. So. Yeah, and just in public comment, I responded to Jill not as a select person, but as just a parent. Uh, my daughter is facing a similar situation. She's not in the honors calc class, 
Um, but it's another requirement that's actually blocking her out of band, and it's the first time that we've not been in band since fourth grade. Um, she's in jazz band, she does all the parades, she does quabbin, she's tried out for states. I mean, she's fully immersed in it and actually looking forward to who the new band director is, and now she's also um, blocked out of it. And it's really, it's, it's a really hard adjustment for me to come to terms with what it means that music will not be in her life as a student. And for Camden, he made a different choice because music wasn't going to be not in his life. Music was going to be in his life regardless of anything else. So, you know, I just feel as a mom, man, this kid's making this choice that he shouldn't have to be making at 15 years old. So, just take a look at it again. That's all I'm asking. And, and just to see, I mean, I, I, I understand all that. The ins and outs of everything I do. But, um, I just think it's it's important for the kids to be able to to, to be a well-rounded student. And the band makes it hard, and the block schedule makes it hard. So that's Thank it. Thank you. And sure. I could actually comment because <laughs> when I have good news, I have no problem coming. Yeah. Um, we fixed the problem <laughs> today. Okay. Thank you. So basically, the schedule is still in flux, and so when the, when the mm -hmm. um, was this brought to my attention, we're still building next year's schedule. And when we looked at the, the number of students that were affected by it, we've been working on it since actually today we did solve it. So, however, I say we solve it here. Judy, I don't know where your problem, you know, no, where your problem know exists, but <laughs> I don't know where your, your child's problem is, but being a small school, things yeah. do drive the budget. Band is, and so we have A, B, C, D blocks and bands B block. And right. it's all year long. Right. So you can see how that locks the schedule if you're going to start taking some um, which, especially if you're taking things called singletons, meaning it meets in only one block, AP courses and those kind of things, we try to schedule around band. Band drives the schedule. And so I agree, we've already asked our union, um, for teachers, the union, which has a, uh, a clause in it to look at, to create a scheduling group, when asked to look at the schedule again, because it, as we've added more AP courses and um, created more singletons within the schedule, we've done a lot of things on the other end, I talked about that earlier in this year about, um, we're trying to open up the schedule and offer more opportunities we're still every time we create a higher level group or even a lower level group it becomes a singleton you know what i mean so if you have a special ed class a special ed math class that's meeting um you know that's a singleton you know so then all of a sudden you, if you can you know if you have that during meat block then you can't you know so you can see how it it becomes a problem what does what does have what has to happen well there will always be choice within schedule you know what i mean it, you can't have everything and that kind of thing too you know, this particular problem affected more than just one student, and so you know, we took a longer look at about how we can move teaching assignments around, but it's a longer, for those who've done the schedule, it's a huge process because you move one thing and it ripples through, then you gotta fix three other things and it ripples through. But, um, you know, I wanna look at the schedule long-term and, and, and build something that, that fits. Right now, our schedule has a lot of duct tape holding it together to all the things we're trying to do in a small school. And it's, it's a good problem because the amount of offerings we offer and the amount of things we, do to flex within the schedule, but it's really, it's, it's time to look at how we do it and then rebuild it. And that's, it's a two year process, I would say. It's gonna be the next year of planning and it's gonna take another year to bring it in place. But I, I agree. Right. That, that was it, that's all. Can I ask a question about the teacher's schedule, the band teacher's schedule, full time, right? So how many classes does she teach a day? So it's middle school and high school. Right. So those are, that's, um, so, and then she teaches pop music, and she teaches the VHS class. So, so, so they teach three out of the four blocks. All the teachers right. do. Yeah, I mean, and it's different. Next semester, it's into uh, history of music or you know those kind of. I was just wondering if you know. I know that this certainly is an ideal. I've been in a band most of my life, but if she could split the band in two and have two classes in the same, two different periods of the same class, essentially. Yeah. And that's something we're going to look at long term. You know, that's something that, um, again, we have to look at. Um, I got a new director coming in next year, and um, you know, I'm kind of trying to keep status quo so it's not a flux year for a new director after it's going to be hard enough to fill Karen's shoes next year. Um, and that's going to be some of the discussion is what, how do we, and also looking at the middle school schedule. So for those of you who know, middle school schedule, D block, they come down to the high school and take all the, all the elective course teachers out of their classes. So the rest of the high school cannot be in anything that is arts related 
or technology related or whatever, because that's when the middle school is coming down to use those teachers. So that, so that holds up that block. So now you're, you know, so you can, now you can see now that if you're talking about this, you know, it, it, it creates these log jams in the, in the schedule. And so, you know, ideally, should it be a, you know, a four by four block? Should it be a five blocks a day? You know, what do we, how do we change? And then it's going to be a contractual issue. It'll come back to this board, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> thank you for letting me know. Oh, thank you. Thank you. It, it sounds like um, they it's are pretty minor compared to what you were talking about before, but <laughs> it's not millions of dollars. But it's important to my family, so thank it's you. It's worth Thank you. Any other public comment? Moving along, uh, Student Advisory Council is not mm -hmm. present tonight. So, unfinished business, non-union per personnel salary recommendations. Mm -hmm. So, we gave these out to you last month. Um, and I don't know if Donna emailed these to you or not, but there was. You gave them to me. So, I'm going to hand these out to you. <clears throat> These are salary comparisons you had to ask because I had brought it when we negotiated my contract to take a look at uh, the rationale behind the um, change in the school business manager's salary. So I'll wait until everybody has it. So you look at a comparison of the FY15 salaries and FY16 salaries, certifications, um, years of experience, um, and that was my rationale for leaving the salary up to where I did. Madam Chairman, did you talk about going into executive session? Did we did. About, yes. But I don't oh, see it listed. Is. Well, we have one posted on yeah. number nine. We always have executive session on, on the yeah, uh, right. agenda. Well, we talked about it at the last meeting, did we not? We did. Yes. I asked people to be ready to go into executive session. Yeah, we have not gone into executive session with the other towns, just to let you know. So I did not do it as an automatic um, because in Wakey's case, it was a motion and a second, and it was voted and approved. So I. Looking at this because this is out there, it is a public document. I'm not sure. Correct. Um, I don't think the superintendent feels like we need to go into executive session to discuss it. So. I'm not, yeah, and please be aware that I met with um, Cindy and with Ken Cutterback, the elementary chair, oh, probably about three months ago mm -hmm. to let them know that, that I was proposing a 2% uh, salary increase for everybody but Donna Hathaway and Patty. And and I gave my rationale, they supported that, which is why I'm bringing it back to you. I took it one step further, asked Patty to put together some salary comparisons because you seem to appreciate that for my salary, mm -hmm. to put it in perspective. Does anyone have any questions? Can I hear a motion? Motion to go into executive? Yeah. Yes. What you're trying to do? No, I was just going to take a vote on well, we could, the we could percent increase for everyone. To conduct strategy session in preparation for negotiations with non Do you feel? I don't feel that Correct, we but are you making that motion? Phil was starting to make the motion. I was so, uh, confused, I'm sorry. But I mean, you know, we should be talking about these in, in, in executive sessions before they get put on the table. And uh, They're all public. They are once we once we go I've to bring them back out and, and what have you, but you know, I just think we should be. And you know, I'm, I do want to tell you that I did check. We don't have any authority with the school nurse, but we do with the bed director and the business manager. Mm-hmm. Okay. Correct. Okay. We have authority. Oh, we. Oh, I see. I remember the nurse. Okay. Yeah. okay. Um, does anyone else have any questions? Or does anyone else feel that they need to go on a well, it's, session? It's a, it's, it's a large raise. It's not the 102 we're talking about. It, it's going to what? 105. What? 105. But I think, Bob, if you look at the comparisons and the certifications, and can you say what SOF is? 
Um, S SFO is a Sorry. national designation. Uh, it's for all of North America. And I was one of the first 100 to take the exam and be awarded the designation. And it's, it's for a school finance official. So it's um, recognized throughout North America. I had to pass an exam. It's just credentials to show um, that I understand <coughs> the ethics and the, the knowledge base um, of the broad spectrum of <coughs> business, including human resources. And it's not something, there's more and more people who are attaining it now, uh, but it is a national designation. I was one of the first 100 in, the, in North America to achieve it. Um, and it does give me, I believe, uh, an extra. So, uh, are we going to be, are we going to be looking at any further adjustments? Or is this going to take care of the fact that this was that based. Patty's now doing the human re resources. This area? is based on Patty and I are working to develop and implement human resources. She certified them under MTRS, so she does retirement counseling with teachers who are planning retirement. Um, so we're not going to see any further adjustments in the position going forward? Well, the, my, contract, call, my yeah, contract does call about for um, a, an, inc an annual increase based on my performance and a COLA raise. I've never seen a contract, Patty, and uh, I don't know if it ever came to the board. Well, it did. I, I came to a meeting in July, and I met all of you. Uh, before I was appointed. <coughs> well, we, but the board, I don't think, ever voted on the contract. I um, think it was a contract. I think we had the contract and we handed it back in. You all signed it and gave it to me and I went on my merry way. I signed it? Yeah, your, your signature is on it. And well, I also completed her evaluation. So this recommendation for race is based well, on, just, uh, on go, that as well. I'll go along with it tonight as long as we're not going to be back in here next year when I vote four or five percent raise. Well, I have chair, can we... Uh, Proceed and go on with I this, think please. I'll make a point. Does anybody else have anything else on? Yes, other people have things okay. to say. Okay, I feel like I'm just a constant naysayer. But again, I struggle with the fact that the I understand the justification for the increase. I think I know for a fact I have a blanket item on my job description that says other duties as assigned, and they don't come with any increase in salary in any way, shape, or form. And I, I struggle with the idea of. I, under, I think that a 2% increase would keep it in line somewhat with the um, surrounding districts, and it would be something that we could evaluate going forward as as it becomes necessary. I just, I really struggle. I'm sorry, Patty, it's not a personal thing. I understand. It but really Judy, it's not just the other duties that it's assigned. I was, uh, my job description is the business manager, and I am now taking under a whole new department called Human Resources, which, which does never not have. exist. I think it's really inappropriate for you to lobby for more money. Then renegotiate the contract. I do. I, that's what this it's is. It's like personally, it's like, the contract, the contract, the contract is why they're, so this where is, is that across the line right there? Do we see, have a copy of that? Is that what you guys saw in your meeting? That's not what we're doing. Uh, when we did contract, contract. Yeah. no, we the contract um, hasn't changed. Just the salary recommendation. Correct. Which one are we talking about? When I talked to her about three months ago, yeah. and what she told Kenny and I was, in a sense, what we've just discussed is that the um, the business manager is taking on more mm -hmm. duties as the HR person, as the retirement person, and that just in this whole, we did not have this piece of paper at that time that her salary was out of whack with the other area. And, and that is true, that happens to people. And so I was fine with it, I still am fine with that. I think we should pay people what keeps them here. And I think that she's doing a fantastic job. As is Donna, if you move down to Donna, she um, was getting paid exactly the same as everyone else in the room. And she was doing other things not other things just to be nice but those were part of her job and i've seen it i mean don has been incredible so i hearing that i said i totally support that too and i understand that whole two percent thing but i think we also have to pay people uh, what the going rate is and if we were going to go out looking for another biz business manager what would we have to pay yes one of my concerns about this proposal is just a month or two ago, we sat here and laid people off. People are unemployed. Mm -hmm. And 
you've proposed a five or six percent increase to mm -hmm. the salary, I have a really hard time choking that one down. Like, yep, we're good with laying people off, but we're going to give you a five or six percent increase. And I totally get that you're doing things that are outside your job description. Thank you very much for doing it, but I don't understand how we can do this this big jump. I get people paying, you know, paying people for the job that they do, yes, but how can we justify this this right? I agree with that. Yeah, you're out of turn. My other question would be: Is the model that you're creating by having the business manager do the HR functions sustainable in the long term, and would you actually have to consider creating an HR position, which is a completely separate, you know, like a separate resource, a, a, you know, a new FTE added to the budget that has its own salary that addresses those situations, rather than make this part of the business? I, I'm hoping not, because as we're trying to streamline. Um, the whole business office that some of the duties that currently other people are performing will not be as redundant as they currently are. Does that make sense? I think um, just so I can just, um, and I'm not lobbying for more money, I'm trying to explain the justification. Um, in my two previous positions, I did both. And one of the things that we continually get criticized on in our audit is that we don't have, because we are so small and we don't have a human resource, we have a person who is doing soup to nuts and is the treasurer, which is a gaping hole in, in um, internal controls. So in order to stop gap that, um, I went to the superintendent with a plan that A, I would be the backup payroll person, because that was the first thing that we were getting. Um, we didn't have anyone dual trained yeah, in any function. Yeah. So now I am the other pair of hands in payroll, should anything. So this person can take a vacation if this person gets ill. Um, my predecessor didn't do that. Secondly, we in this plan, we're going to do a division. By creating this HR department, we're going to do a division. So the person who processes payroll won't be able to create a new employee or terminate an employee. Those functions would come to me. Um, and we're looking at different ways that we are going to do that. I'm going to take over all the insurance benefits. Again, freeing that up from our payroll person who right now, is, whose workload could be um, focused on different things. And uh, by doing that, we also are providing a resource to our employees that doesn't exist right now by having an HR department. And we're going to begin it with Frontier, but I don't, Think that I'm not going to. I have Deerfield teachers and other teachers that call me and say, "Hey, I hear that you can help me with retirement." So I'm already doing that same function also for the other four towns. And although we don't have the <coughs> HR function, it is something that the town administrators has been asking us to look at as well to take over the benefit administration for the teachers uh, and school employees. So this is something that's rapidly growing. Um, and it's going to be a growing process. There's going to be steps that will happen in 16. There'll be steps that happen in 17. Because while I'm taking on more human resource function, I'm hoping that the manual pieces of this job that I was explaining to you about the purchase orders will go in line. So as I get every school district on to putting the purchase orders in so we have real time encumbering, I'll be able to then take the next level to HR. And I have been able to do that in much larger districts, so I don't see it as a as something. And, and I'm, you know, Judy, I, you know, I'm committed. I stay until my job is done. Did you raise your hand? Uh, oh, I'm sorry, I thought I saw a hand go up. But... Okay. <clears throat> I could support the small raise. Uh, I think what you're saying, 105, to eliminate taking on an entirely new position in HR. I'm bringing on that would be an issue huge cost. My only concern right now is I never was part of the original contract. I was never at this, I never signed anything. And now I'm hearing it's also changing because you're taking on more duties. So now I'm voting on a contract that I never saw that's been changed. No, it's not written any any differently in the contract. So, but should it be if we're taking on these other duties? My job description will change. The contract terms will stay the same. All of your benefits are the same. Duties will increase. I believe. I believe as a, as duties as assigned 
also means temporary duties, not uh, permanent situations like we're looking at here, which would be a job description change, as opposed to just something she would do to fill in for someone. Yes? Two follow-up questions. The first one is, do you have to be certified in any way to perform the HR functions by the state? No. Or by, no? Okay. And the second one is, then does that open us up to requiring a new business manager coming in to also be able to perform these same functions? A lot I'm not do. saying you're leaving, Patty. I understand. I a, a lot do. It depends on the district. But like Keith was just saying, if I were to leave anyway, let's say you know I, I found another job, you'd still be looking at having to hire if you, if the person that comes in doesn't have HR skills. You're looking at a sixty-five thousand to eighty thousand dollar hire to get an HR person in here, which we don't have. And I and I think that's what Keith is saying that you know it, it is a going you know a five percent raise, but it's saving an additional sixty-five to eighty thousand dollar salary. optics of this are bad this year for, for the, the timing and the optics are bad for me I don't think they're going to get any better next year looking at our maintenance program. next year is not going to be a zero percent budget so you're going to tie up the figure for next year for the business manager at the same time so that we don't come back and talk about this going forward uh, with an adjustment for next year just peg it out what it's going to be for next year and the year before when is the contract up it's up in June this, this June? Correct. But if you want to peg it out for, so I just don't want to see another $5,000 raise next year. You know. I'm not going to. I don't yeah, know that that's, that's, that was the point of it, Bob. No, that's. It was to realign the job. That's how they looked other. at it. And that's, I think we're vulnerable for, for FinCom looking at that. They, they looked three years ago, see what the position used to pay, see what, what it paid, when, see the bump that it took. And, that's the stuff that we're vulnerable on. If but Billy Smith was here, he would say, should have been part of the budget. It's in the budget. I'm about to say, that's, that's what Billy would have said. If we were bringing this forward the last hour of the last meeting, we were doing all this, this stuff. This has been on the table. I know, I'm just saying, Billy. It is this has been on the table. Actually, it was Bill's suggestion that I give this to you in May, yes, which right. is what I did. Yeah. So you've had it for a month. Oh, yeah. So. And has anyone yeah. called? No. no. So that's not to say though that we have not been thinking about it. Okay, but so, and we weren't. We couldn't talk about it the last week. Right? So we weren't oh. going to talk about it. Right. So this is the first opportunity that we've had to talk. No, about but it. you could have emailed questions. Is my concern. Because I stopped by it and had some questions. But I, but I thought we talked about going to executive session. We'd we hassle, did. We hassle it out in the executive session. We did. So I didn't bother anybody. Uh, you know, so, but you didn't want to go in executive session. I think we can, but you don't want to. And, uh, I asked people if they wanted to go in executive session, Bobby. You're the only one that did. Sorry, and, the, the, and the superintendent specifically asked not to. So unless we want to continue to beat the dead horse, um, does Keith? Oh, just is the changes, are they laid out and formalized, or are we just doing it kind of as we go along? We're working, Marty and I are working on a job description to incorporate. Um, I think we've agreed on the title um, that was suggested by Cindy and Mr. Cutterback, mm -hmm. uh, Director of Business Services, which would encompass the HR. Um, we, I've been gathering uh, job descriptions from other HR directors, and we're going to try to merge the two. Um, it's a summer project, and uh, as well as my, I just had my evaluation with Marty, so I have a week to get my goals in for the coming year. <coughs> so I'm working on those goals, and they'll be submitted to the superintendent, and they'll be business and finance and HR, what I hope to achieve in FY16, which pieces of the puzzle that we put in place. And that is my understanding that that's what I'm evaluated on. <laughs> I have to use the same rubric as teacher. <laughs> that said, um, I totally am in tune with the 2% and that we lay people off. Totally am there with you. However, I just think that the job description, as it was described to me three months ago, warranted her 
job to be changed to director of business services, so it was more encumbering. And the fact that, I mean, she's sitting right here, sorry Patty, but I don't want to lose her. I think she's doing a phenomenal job. I think she's shaking a lot of cobwebs out. And I, th I think that this is in keeping with the area. And I think that's that turned out to be the more important thing. Phil? If, if you're going to praise someone, we should go into an executive session to do that. I mean, that's too, um, Again, no. I asked if, some, if everybody uh, wanted to go in, into executive session, and Bob was the only one that made that motion. So obviously, that, that, that was going to not happen. So I don't think All we right, need um, to re-talk about that. All right, can okay. I make a that? I'd like to make a motion that um, this salary schedule be approved at 2% for everybody except for Brenda. Donna. Donna. And Brenda's on there, too. Not, not Brenda. Okay. We need to read. 2% for all employees with the exception of Donna Hathaway. Correct. Second. Any further discussion? The exception is because. I'm just curious about why you made the motion. I didn't make it Or why you made the motion. Because it was a very small number, comparatively. So we laid off people. Any further discussion? I would like to amend that motion to include Patricia Cavanaugh's um, salary increase to 105000 Do I hear a second? You have a second. Any discussion on the amendment? Hearing none, we will vote the amendment. So you're only voting the amendment, and that is to raise Patricia Kavanaugh's salary to 105. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Or you know what? Forget that. I'm going to take a roll call. Mary Raymond? Yes. Bill Smith is absent. Alan Lipp? Yes. Keith McFarland? Yes. William Mayer PC? Yes. Robert Decker? No. Phil Cantor? No. Lynn Roberts? No. Judy Pierce? No. Bob Holla? Yes. Cindy Womatt? Yes. Patty, can you do that addition for me? <laughs> I just didn't get a sheet. Okay, I sorry. It's okay. I'll be doing my regional link right now. I got it right here. Okay, yeah. so Cindy will not with the Yes. Who do you have next? Bill Cantor with the No. Oh, that That's Joe Mayor Pizzi. He was yes. Joe Mayor was yes. we go back to the original motion that is amended so that um, the original motion amended would be to vote 2% for all people listed on the salary schedule except for Patricia Kavanaugh and Donna Hathaway. You could just vote the salaries as listed. Okay, so that's, does everybody understand that? Voting on everything except for Patty. We're voting no, on everything. 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 As the salaries as lit, the recommended district salaries as listed for FY 2016. Okay. All those in favor. Oh, never mind. Roll call. Excuse me. Um, Mary Raymond. Yes. Alan Lip. Yes. Keith McFarland. Yes. 
Bill Marapizzi? Yes. Bob Decker? No. Phil Cantor? No. Lynn Roberts? No. Judy Pierce? No. Bob Holla? Yes. Cindy Womatt? Yes. Here's it will come out. I didn't forget anybody. Should come out to 6.04 to 4.19. Okay. The motion carries and we move along. Thank you. New business. Adopting the OPEB legislation. We've been talking about this for a long time. <clears throat> We've been hearing a lot at the four town meetings. We know we have a trust that's not funded. We have to talk about how we're going to fund it. So, I'll let you. Pardon? Is it today's date? Today's the night. You want to catch up on that? Okay. So, um, just a little background. OPEB stands for Other Post Employment Benefits. So, when someone works for us, we are responsible for their benefits in their retirement. Um, and what's happening right now, why this is becoming an issue, is because people would work for you for 30 years as an active employee. They'd work till they were probably 65, and then they might have 10 to 15 years retirement that we would have a liability for. Well, now people are retiring younger, and their retirement span is becoming almost equal to their, to their working span. And what complicates this process is that we have the largest number of baby boomers retiring at this time. So we have this liability that's out there. And sooner or later, it's going to overtake our entire budget to support retirees' health care. So what the, this legislation does is to say, let's start putting money away now so that when that happens, you will be in a better position and your entire budget will not have to increase double by retirees health care. One of the things that I gave you tonight is this um, Frontier Regional School District Retiree Medical Actuarial Valuation. We have been having this done and this tells us, it's a, uh, an estimation of what our liability will be for our current employees. And if you look at the page that is marked page one on uh, the left hand side. Uh, as of July 1st of 2013, the, um, oh, that was the mid cycle date. Right now, our unfunded accrued liability is $8,330,000. And our annual required contribution, which is called an ARC, is $930,000. Now, currently, we pay about $110,000 a year in retiree health care now that we carry in our budget. So what they're saying, the ARC and what we currently pay is the gap. And that gap is just going to continue to grow and grow and grow. Um, so we need to adopt this legislation. And by doing so, it will allow us to um, recognize the liability. And it is going on our financial statements. And what will happen is our credit rating could be hurt because we're not making any um, effort to try and reduce this long-term liability. So it will affect our borrowings and things in the long term. So what we're asking you to do tonight is to accept the legislation and to um, establish the trust. And with that done, that at least gives us the opening door. Then we would have to talk about how will we fund it. And I don't know if you want to not get into that conversation tonight, um, but if this is approved this evening, what will happen then is Paula Light, who is the treasurer, and I will go and look for a trust. I've been talking um, at my, I, at the meeting I missed last month, I was down at my Massachusetts uh, Association of School Business Officials, and w this one of the breakout sessions was on regional. We were talking how regionals are going to handle this, and everyone's doing it a little bit differently. But one of the options that they talked about, uh, and I need to get more information, is that if you have a plan, if the school committee comes up with a plan on how we're going to fund this, and let's say that we can find 
we could get a return because we have a good funding plan, we could find a trust that would give us a return of 7%. Right now, um, lending rates are 4%. It might make sense to borrow the money at 4%, earn 7%, and we've got a net 3%, and we're fully funded. So that would be one option to look at. But that, I think, is a conversation for further down the road. I think right now we want to establish, the, accept the legislation, establish the trust, and maybe decide, since we do have E&D earnings of 419263 if you want to direct any of that money as the initial deposit into the trust. It's a very complex situation, and I know I just broke it down to very simplistic um, pieces. But if you have any questions, I can try and entertain them. If we put the money in. As we go forward, the current expenses to carry the hired people can be recharged against those funds, offset against them, or do we have to uh, continue to pay over what we're paying now? Well, that's the decision that comes. But once the money goes in, it never comes out. We can't borrow against the later if we need it. So we, we need to think hard and fast once we put $10 mm -hmm. in. Yeah. Because the only way we can do it is to pay retiree health insurance. That's the only thing it can be used for. So that's why right now, as I said, we are carrying $110,000 in retiree insurance. And it's only going to keep increasing. I think we had, what, like four retirements this year? Five. Five retirements this year. So that adds that's adds to the budget next year. And then... But we also pay... pay health insurance of those people who will also have to take them out their sick time, which gets charged against us also. Correct. But that's a, we do that in the current year budget. And that's not a, a, a that's not an OPEB liability. That is an employment benefit. It's not a post employment. No. Right. But that's why Bob, you see towns putting money in incrementally. I mean also people don't have got some money sitting around. And then part of what this, the, what these people will do is once we start funding it, is they'll tell us when we should start use, utilizing it. But because we have nothing in it, they can't tell me when to start using it. And this, I will be updating this and sending Danziger and um, Markov um, the data at the end of this year too. So this gets refreshed every year. It's part of our audit that we have to have this done. We continue to pay them study every year? Yes, we do. What's it cost to do this one? Well, the, the initial one we did as a group of Franklin County business managers, and the FERCOG actually paid for half. They got a grant to do it, so the FERCOG paid for half, and we paid for half. Uh, all the towns that went in on well, it. We're going to have to pay the maintenance fee to keep it Correct. I, um, I'm going to, let me just check and see what we did pay. I have access now to my... You know I was going to well, it was five grand, ten grand, or more. It was eleven hundred and thirteen dollars. So the maintenance would be about two hundred fifty bucks. They've already got the fat in, and they just got up My guess. So, in September, we're going to have a breakdown of how much money we had left over as of June 30th after you paid out your money to do your maintenance programs. So we're going to know how much money we had left over that's going to go into free cash. So then we can actually make a projection of what should be available to start on this project. Or do you want to do it tonight with the 419263 that we already have in the e &A? Um, I don't. I want to do it actually, Patty, to the budget. Be, you know, I'd rather budget it and you know, tell but that's us. that's two years out. Because well, I, you do a supplemental budget and do it as a supplemental budget and vote it back out. But, but I want to make. we have to have four special town meetings, Bob. But, but not if we take it from the e and but we do the supplemental. But what I'm trying to say is I want to build our cost into the budget. So going forward, you know, people understand that our costs are X. And if we vote it, we can vote stuff out of the excess of efficiency. It never gets built into the, the overall budget. And when you 
you can get up there in an annual town. We had a zero based budget. Yeah, but we didn't provide for, for this that we know was coming. And, you know, we and need to. But that's part of the funding plan, and that would be one of my recommendations that for FY17, that we build into the budget a piece for funding. Yeah, I think we should. But what we can put into this thing is if you've got money left over from this current year, <coughs> you figure out at the end of June, you figure out what's left over. Right. If there was $50,000 left over, I don't have a problem sending the $50,000. But, but it would be an E and D. Well, so what's the difference between using 50000 of the 419? I want to make sure that whatever money is coming out of E and D is going to show through budget. It's not going to show through the budget. Not until fiscal year 17. Yeah. We could do a so, supplemental budget. As much as I really have enjoyed your expertise on both sides here, we do have some other questions, Keith, or comments. What exactly is the board being asked to do tonight? Exactly. Adopt the legislation and allow us to set up a trust. But so we don't have to put any monies in. That so was my it's question. Opening the account. Right. Opening the Correct. Which we most need towns to, are doing across the board. Right. They right. are. Because digesting this is your account. We need money to put in it. How much money do we need? But we're just setting up the account. We're not so putting money into it. What's the base amount? What's the base amount that goes into an account to make it an active account? That I don't know, Lynn, but I am thinking it's fifty to one hundred thousand. Although Sunderland just put five, but that's their second year. Yes, but I mean it's not huge amounts that people necessarily have to put in. So we can vote to open this account, put a starter <coughs> amount of money into it, the, and then add to it later. Yes, but right now. <coughs> I guess why it's important now is because we want to get a good return. So if I go out there with $5,000, I'm not going to get a trust that would have a good return. But the money that we get returned has to stay there. <coughs> but we're already down on what we should be putting in there. Correct. Correct. Right. This year alone, we should be putting $990,000 in just for this year. How many and teachers would that cost us? Judy. Okay, so I think we need to make, you're asking us to make a motion then to adopt the OPEB laws legislation as presented and to establish the trust, correct? Correct, but do we, we want to... Money to we have to put money in or two. We have to put money That can be a second vote. We have to put some type of monies into it. It's just... Then it's you just can adopt the language for the legislation first. Mm -hmm. You can just do that. Is that right? what your motion was, I believe? I'd love to do that. I think that was your motion. Thank you for second. saying that so eloquently. Did I hear a second? I did. We had a second. Um, all who, those. Who was any the other discussion? Okay. All those in favor of adopting the legislation? Unanimous? No. No. Um, no? I think opposed? This is premature. Okay. One opposed? All right. So now the second <coughs> part of that would be. You're going to have to fill the words in from your daddy. Oh, I'm sorry. Bob, how much should we put in here, Bob? Bobby, I want to, I want to, whatever we put in there should go as true as a supplemental budget. So, and because we need to build it back into the budget because next year when we go in and we ask for $300,000 to go into it, they're going to say, well, you know, you know, you got to have your budget level funded. And, you know, I don't. We're not going to let us put three hundred thousand in there. Next year we're going to get fifty thousand. If we started it out with twenty-five thousand today out of the eight day, I could live with that. Started. Well, fifty, twenty-five. We got four nineteen in here. <coughs> it can't but, but, but we also don't have any money sitting there if we have a catastrophic event. Event here, and we still we still have, we'll have three hundred something thousand. $370,000. Yeah, if you give 50. Oh, if you do 50. Yeah, yeah 50. Yeah. Can somebody make a motion with a number? Make the motion. Huh? I'll make a motion to put 50000 into the trust. Can I have a Out second? Of excess e of deficiency. E and D. Second. Yeah. second. Any other discussion on the amount of money we're putting in? Sorry, you had that. I'm sorry. Judy, Judy, Judy. 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 All right. I guess I just would like to, I feel like there's been so many uncertainties presented here that you know maybe a nominal amount of money is is okay but I'm hoping that we have a clearer understanding starting in September. I think we need time to digest this. 
Yes. Well, so 50 is a good start. The yes. thing we have to watch, and I don't think we're going to have the problem because we spent a lot of money tonight, is we can only carry a little over 500,000 in the e and mm -hmm. Okay? So we have to turn around here. Otherwise, we have to return it to the towns. Correct. That's part of my retirement. Yeah. I'm aware. Any other discussion? I guess I'm not, I don't really understand where the $50,000 is coming from when we couldn't pay teachers. Why are we, where is $50,000 coming from that we couldn't use that money to employ the people that we had? You do understand that they weren't let go just because of monies, but because no. of enrollment? They were undersubscribed classes. But Except it wasn't for the, this bubble that we talked about, but we're going over it. It, it really comes down to the same thing. It's money. You have to take that. We didn't want to pay extra money for this end, bubble. At the end of each fiscal year, whatever money is unused goes into what we call excess and deficiency, and that gets certified by the Mass Department of Revenue. Right. So last year, we had um, oh, over 419263 uh, certified, but we used a piece of it to return the excess um, regional transportation money to the towns in their assessments. And what remains in the excess of deficiency is four hundred nineteen thousand two hundred sixty-three right. that we have to use when we get back to the towns. No, no, no. 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 Hold five percent of our budget. Five percent okay. of our budget. But okay. if we have four nineteen remaining, and depending how much we have remaining this year, those two numbers together could exceed the 5%, and then the money would go back to the towns rather than using it to, to fund our own. And that was the reason I guess I was suggesting 100,000 so that we would be well below our 5%. And you're saying we should be paying 90,000 now? 990,000. Oh, nine. Just a point of clarification for me. When you say that it would be returned, if we had excess this year, are you talking about if we had excess over the amount of the maximum, over the five, it was on five bond. Let's go. Okay, that's just. I just wanted to make okay. sure. I said. Correct. Okay. I know. There's too many numbers floating around. Yeah. Okay. So we're still at fifty. That was the motion. That was the motion. I don't have a vote yet. Right. We. Do we have any other discussion on the fifty? Well, do so you want to amend that? Just a clar point of clarification. You, uh, you, you said I heard earlier that next year's um, retiree medical is going to be a hundred plus thousand. We're at a hundred and ten now with five retirees, so that's going to increase that piece. So we would that one hundred ten be used placed into the trust since it has to be paid out? I don't think we want to start withdrawing it as soon as we deposit it. It's sort of like a savings I, account for when we get to the point where we can no well I'm balance just it trying to think it. about justifying a hundred thousand deposit rather than the fifty. Anyone else? Okay. Well, that's a better idea if we have any more money in September to add Correct. to that. Correct. We can always add to it, right? Yeah. Correct. We can, but in the meantime, we may end up be giving money back before we have well, any money, and then we'll, we won't we'll have make, any We'll money. make sure Bob spends the rest of it so it doesn't go over to 5%. Right, Bob? <laughs> <laughs> He's got good purchases. Good good purchases. Good He's good 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 I've already taken that into account. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so if I already haven't taken that money into account, we could be going over our 5%. Yeah, but, there's the other, but there's other things on this list. <laughs> that we could take care of, so it doesn't do it that way. But I don't have authorization to spend that money. Well, right. you could get it right well, we here. We just gave authorization to take care of those red line you things. You told us what you had. I mean, if there's right. other That's a, and I accounted for that $182,000. So I'm saying even then, because we don't want no money going into E&D, right. or maybe we do, we could be risking the 500000 which means the 5%, excuse me, which means we'd be getting it back to the towns before we could make another amendment to get it into OPEP. Uh, Keith and then Jim. Keith has. <laughs> Do I, was, I was just going to say, um, can we amend the motion that we have on the board? You can amend it. Yes, we can. Can, okay. can I amend the motion? I, I think I might. No, somebody else no you seconded second it. To increase the contribution to $100,000. Do I hear a second to a, the amended? Second. Okay. okay. Any discussion on the amendment? So we need to vote the amendment. Nice right, so the amendment is to change the number from 50 to 100,000. All those in favor, please raise your hand or I will do. 
Okay, one against. Um, any opposed? I, I, I apologize. Any opposed? <laughs> that is totally on me. I apologize. You already wrote it down. Um, so one opposed. Okay, so the amendment is that it is now 100000 that we are voting to put into the account. Now we have to vote on the actual motion as amended. Uh, I will do a roll call. Um, Mary Raymond? Yes. Alan Lipp? Yes. Keith McFarland? Yes. William Mayor Pizzi? Yes. Bob Decker? Yes. Phil Cantor? No. Lynn Roberts? Yes. Judy Pierce? Yes. Bob Holla? Yes. Cindy Womet? Yes. Okay. And so we still have enough money for a rainy, dunk, rainy day fund if something happens drastically that we need Three hundred or four hundred thousand dollars. We have three hundred nineteen. If we gave all four hundred nineteen, if we had something go wrong, then we would have hardly Correct. anything. Okay, moving along, we're up to reports. Collaborative. Lynn. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, unfortunately, we have another business. <laughs> oh, B. I apologize. B got stuck with a discussion of RFP process for audit services. Okay, I'm going to make this really quick. Um, at the last meeting I attended, which I believe was in April, uh, the committee, it was the committee's wish that we go out for a request for proposal yeah. for a new auditor. Um, in doing that, the, the RFP process, um, we need to put together a committee. So I was, um, I, I won't explain the entire process, except I'm looking for volunteers from the school committee to serve on the meeting, um, on the RFP committee. Uh, I need at least what, two, three people? I'd like three. Three school committee people. And when would that be? When would you like me to meet? Tomorrow so at 7.30. What does, what does um, a.m.? It's going to be about three meetings. We're going to need three meetings. Okay. And two and you'll get do you have any dates on those? No, I don't. Okay, so I guess you would get together. Do we have anyone Where that Where do they help? Uh, at central office. So we can, I can do it late. Like when you get out of work, I can do it before you go to work. Do we have any volunteers? Bob and Bob. Hala, Judy. Okay. And Thank Bob you. Decker. Yep, right. that's three. Thank you, people. Thank and then you. I'll explain the process and uh, I'll, I'll email you. No service breakfast. You know, nope, I'll, 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 I'll feed you breakfast. Never mind service. Thank, you, Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Bob. Okay, moving along now because we don't need a vote on that. Um, the collaborative, Lynn. Did you have a uh, really nice um, presentation on what's offered this summer for the collaborative for teacher training. Um, mm -hmm. One of them is being held here right, in July, uh, technology training for teachers. Um, also a really good presentation on ELL classes that teachers are having to take for yeah. their recertification. Um, that's a huge thing for teachers and they've got lots of classes going on for teachers to take advantage so they can get me certified. Good stuff. All good stuff. That's Thank you. Anybody have any questions? Okay. Um, principal? <clears throat> I'll kind of I'll fire through some of it. It's mostly straightforward. Um, we did step up day last Monday for our sixth grade. They came through. Had a nice day here. Um, we finished up MCAS um, basically yesterday for science. And so we're kind of done with that. We had graduation last Friday, you may have heard. Uh, we graduated 90, 92 graduates, and it was a very wonderful ceremony and such. It's always good to see that. Um, we have a mini sp spring field day um, on Friday afternoon, for part of the last block. Eighth grade students will be going to Gettysburg next Monday. And the one other thing I wanted to kind of bring up that doesn't have a long write-up is the MIA, if you were if you reading the sports section of the paper, passed a, uh, a uh, Rule 53, it was called for student eligibility, which was going to change middle school's eligibility to play JV and varsity athletics without a waiver. And that was um, would really affect Frontier quite a bit. We have about 140-something students in the middle school that participate in JV and varsity athletics. And uh, we... Uh, petition to pretty much the MIA and they put a one-year hold on the rule um, for further investigation. So it, it's one of those things that if it was to pass, um, it would, every sport that is a varsity only sport, middle school would no longer be allowed to play. 
And so you're talking about track, you're talking about cross country, golf, golf tennis, tennis um, wrestling, soccer, skiing. That's about it. so those those sports would middle schools wouldn't be able to participate at all. They couldn't even hang out with the club because that's considered recruiting. Um, so th it was kind of that's a big hit to our to our athletics. A lot of our JV athletics have eighth graders playing on them, and so that would be another thing we would have to file a waiver for for every single one of those teams individually. And individually, those get approved by the uh, executive board, um, which I sit on, but doesn't help a whole lot in the sense of they look at basically the numbers of what the school needs and we'd be hurt in a lot of sports um, it's not even just the sports too I just have to stress that the seventh and eighth graders who, who join these teams where there's no other varsity there's not another level they they're active physically they're learning companionship and um, from peers they're learning the sport they're getting hooked on the sport, you know, at an early age, and we don't get them in seventh and eighth grade. They're not going to come out as ninth graders. Yeah, so that, was, that was one of our one of the arguments I put in my letter to the MIA was that you know, in a seventh through twelve school, you don't start off two years and then all of a sudden change what you're doing into ninth grade. Like, oh, now I'm going to do cross country. I just sat around for two years in middle school, and now I'm going to be that kind of athlete. And so, anyway, so you know, we're going to continue to fight. Um, you're on the executive committee. Yeah, for PVIAC. So they just, they're the ones that oversee all the waivers and that kind of stuff. So, um, anyway, so in Marty Sanderson is also intimately involved with District F and, and that kind of, um, there's a bunch of different committees. And so, you know, the fight is still going on um, and trying to get this, at least the small schools are banding together. I made mean, a lot of phone calls and talked to a lot of <coughs> principals and at least they, they overturned so far. So I'm just kind of mentioning that because long term implications, if it is to go through, and we lose because you got to remember Eastern Mass. This doesn't really affect. They don't, and they have a lot of, mm -hmm. you know, it's a Western Mass regional school kind of problem. Um, is that you know I would look at trying mm -hmm. to somehow be able to start some of those sports in the middle school. I'm just saying that out loud. It's a long way away, and I hope we don't have to ever go there. But I'm just kind of picking people's brains. Is that you know I'd like to have a starter program for track and a starter program for cross country and, and some of those other sports where there's large amounts of kids that participate. Um, as long as the other schools do it too. Well, and that's the other problem. And that's the other problem. Where's the where's the push for this rule coming from? Why the change? Medium sized schools. Medium sized schools get hit. So you know if we so right now, I mean to be honest, you look at our track team. Our track team has especially girls track has a tremendous amount of um, participants. If you include the middle school, you get to a track meet where you go against a medium sized school. We'll call a medium sized school South Hadley. Okay, they're not huge, but they're not considered not small. On the track field, our girls are filling lanes that are scoring points that they may not be able to fill. And so they were saying, well, why do they get to use their middle schoolers? They're playing a competitive advantage. Right, and, and so there, there is an argument there, but we look at it as a participation. You know, you want to be able to have as much of your participation as possible. So I mean, there's a lot of, and these are long arguments, depending on who's sitting where at the table. Mm -hmm. You know, the very big schools, you know, they don't, you don't carry it away it's most of the time because they're not, you know, they have more than one graduating class than we have in our building. Um, but so that's kind of uh, that's kind of where it's at. So what's what defines small, medium, and large, or what defines small? What's the gap between us and South Hadley, for example? Is it like are they twice as big as we are? South Hadley probably has about six, six or seven hundred in their high school. Yeah. So they're about the same size as we are, but all, all just in the high school. So. So yeah, I mean, and basically there's a waiver process, but the waiver process looks at the number of participants you have in high school. So for instance, they say you need 11 on cross country in order to have a team. Well, we have 11 high school girls on cross country, just there about. So they say, well, you don't need any middle schoolers on your team, mm -hmm. even though you know a healthy cross country team would have 20. But you know, they look at the minimum numbers for playing. It doesn't. It really affects those sports. It doesn't affect the. Um, I would say the major the major ball sports you know I mean football we never have middle schoolers play up um, volleyball rarely happens outside of Cassidy I don't know if we've had you know impact players outside of that um, you know basketball 
now and then you have a girl playing and boy playing JV, but not major impact plays. And every now and then you get a phenom going through. And every you know regional kind of school has that, but um, yeah, overall it's mostly those other sports that are varsity only that we were really concerned about. So, anyways, I just want to bring it to people's attention because if it comes back around, you'll know what I'm talking about next year. Thank you for honoring Cat Miner on the uh, sign. Yeah, no, big deal. Yeah, yeah. So in something else that's little unknown, I was at graduation on Friday, that's not little unknown, but our one of our juniors, Robert Minette Rogers, mm -hmm. was the bagpiper, mm -hmm. I don't know if that's the official term. Mm -hmm. um, he's the son of Jeremy Rogers, who's one of our instructors, and I spoke with his parents afterwards and I complimented them on how wonderfully this child did to be able to do that feat and walk at the same time. Mm -hmm. And I said, but I don't know the first thing about playing the bagpipe and I said he could have made 10 mistakes and I wouldn't have known and they assured me he did not make 10 <laughs> mistakes have because they city. would have known if he did and I guess he's planning on doing it next year but he did a phenomenal yeah. job yeah. and um, I think we should just let everybody know that that well, he's one of ours but, but if this thing happens with the coaching and whatever you're going to have to hire more coaches well, that, that would be a decision what we do. Back. What we do to increase, we don't, I mean, obviously I'd like to keep our middle school as active as possible, um, and we'd have to make some decisions based on that. So I'm not, it may, it may, not, it may go away. You know, I'm just saying, and we're hoping that's going to go that direction. Um, by mid-year, I'll have a better idea of where the state is leaning. If they're going to, there's some other options on the table. You know what I mean? About not creating a waiver process for small schools at all. Let small schools all be kind of alone. Because right now, if you look at Turner's Falls, they're about to come back together. But because when they split to a middle school and a high school, they had to file for a waiver. Because the rule is your principal has to be able to oversee all all students. The worst and thing so is that the MIA is not the state; it's us. It's just it's 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 self-funded. It's just schools that have gotten together. It's correct. just us. It's not even the state. But just like our legislature yeah, is just us as well. Yeah, the true. state um, house is just us. True, 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 true that. True that. I'm going to ask you to mention and maybe back up is um, Ms. Sheehan is retiring and in lieu of a retirement party, she's asking that people donate to the food bank and um, Scott told us we could, America could drop off the cans to your office and that you would make sure that they got to where they should go. So thank you very much, well, Scott. <laughs> now we've heard about two teachers that are retiring that have been here for a long time. There's With five. Buildings. There's five teachers. There's retiring. five total. So we said Kathy mm -hmm. Sheehan, Karen Afferton, Carol Pike, Carol Pike Bill Candidate. Sorry. <laughs> Bill Candidate and um, Lou Ann Krebs. They've all been here for. Yeah, they have. At least one is every one of them about 15 years. At least. So would it be in order to uh, thank them all for their service? Has the chairman sent them a nice letter? Or is she going to send them a nice letter anyway? Me? The chairman. Oh, the chairman. Yeah, you didn't hear correctly. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Bob, I can definitely send them a nice letter. That won't be difficult at all. Okay. Thank you. We should uh, invite them here and acknowledge them. Well, we can, okay. but we're not going to meet until September. I know. Do you want to come to another meeting? Going no, forward. No. Superintendent's report, please. Uh, really quickly, I just have legislative bulletins I wanted to hand out to you. And I just wanted to read because I, I think these are nice things to get. This was forwarded to me regarding the prom of, this was year 13, I went to the prom. Um, it was a lovely prom. But this was from the catering director at Union Station. He said, I must tell you that I've been catering for almost 20 years, and your group of students were by far the best behaved and most courteous group I have ever had the pleasure to work with. You should be very proud of them. So I am very proud of them. And, and we do hear that from the different venues that our kids go to, whether it's field trips or um, events. So I like to just pass on this kudos. and. Um, Thank the committee again. I know this was um, at times a, a long and, and difficult year, and I appreciate all of your efforts and the time that you put into it. And uh, looking forward to having new face and new faces, that old faces back. So uh, I wish you all a, a wonderful summer, and we'll see you in September. I have a motion to adjourn. Do I have a second? Oh, yeah. Second. All those in favor? Opposed? And we are adjourned.